welcome to Turn the Page, the official podcast of the Syosset Public Library. Hi, this is Jessica, and I'm here with... Ralph. And we are interviewing. Hi, I'm Wendy, um, I'm a comics artist. And um, Wendy, uh, and we are going to turn the page on Syosset Library. So Wendy is going to be our very special guest at SciCon 2019. Um, so Wendy, would you like to introduce yourself a little bit? Talk about how you got into art and comic stuff. Sure. Um, so my name is Wendy Shu. Uh, I live in Brooklyn and I am a comics artist. Um, and I have a book coming out in October called Mooncakes. It's really fun. It's a YA about a witch and a werewolf. Um, and um, it's written by my good friend Suzanne Walker and we co-created it and um, I did all of the illustrations. So Um, I got into, I've been drawing for as long as I can remember, and um, I did not actually major in art. I actually majored in psychology, believe it or not. I really... I believe it. I mean, how many people major in what they end up doing? (laughs) <laughs> not many not many not me I'll tell you that much I mean I love what I do but it's so funny because um I was a film theory major before I decided that library science was the way to go and Ralph history specifically I, ancient history. I, um so I yeah so I majored in psych and I have I had every intention of becoming um a therapist <laughs> and I did not want to be a therapist after sitting through all of my psych classes (laughs) um but I've always loved uh drawing and I would always post these little comics to just like my hobby blog um that is now dead um on tumblr and uh it kind of took off from there as a um when I first graduated I was like was working at Planned Parenthood doing data entry. <laughs> Another like weird millennial job. I've had several of those. Um, but during during like my I like my uh, stints working administrative um, all these administrative jobs. Uh, I was always doing little comics and posting them to my blog and. I started getting some traction and um, I thought that like maybe I could attempt to do this for a living. Um, So currently I have a day job in the publishing industry, which is great because it kind of feeds into uh, my creative job. That's nice. How um, that that's that's really great. How you know you you're able to sort of marry your day job and um, what you know your other job, which um, I'm really excited to read Mooncakes, by the way. Thank you. I'm, we are super excited. I'm still coloring it. It's been like a whole process. I've definitely learned so much about working on like a full length book. i um, doing Mooncakes for the last year and a half now, I think. Yeah, year and a half. Um, so I started, so when I started doing comics, I was doing these little short stories and tabling at, and I started tabling at conventions in 2014 um, and doing these like short little stories. And then um, Susan and I kind of came up with this idea in 2015 and we thought maybe we could do a web comic. Um, I think, I think books are much more my style and my flow than a webcomic, which um, we learned very quickly that it was so hard to keep up with the constant updating. And I like applaud anyone who does a webcomic and can continue to roll out updates on a consistent basis because I need to finish every, I'm one of those people who needs to finish everything before I can, you know, 
be like, this is ready to go. <laughs> I am. Um, I have uh, some friends and uh, family who had been in web comics, and I I think um, it is difficult. I mean, you know, you you really do have to have to deliver on your um, I guess what your dates are going to be, and it, it does. I, I would. I mean, I would imagine it is easier to have a complete you know, be able to work on something and you know that this is due at a certain time, all of this, then to make sure that you have a certain amount of panels each week, especially with everything else that goes on in our lives with work and other things. For sure. Um, I, Mooncake is actually still updating as a webcomic. Uh, that was part of our agreement because, um, but I am now doing everything, you know, I did all of the line art first and then um, the, and then I did, and then as I'm coloring it, we are, and I'm usually, you know, a chapter or two ahead of what's getting posted. That's like a much more manageable webcomic schedule for me um, to just kind of like put everything in like a queue and just upload it and just like kind of let it roll by itself. That sounds, that sounds pretty great. Uh, so you were talking about um, about coloring. Um, would you like to talk a little bit about the palette you like to use? Um, sure. Um, so I try to choose a different look for like a slightly different look for every project I do, um, which, you know, up until now has mostly just been mooncakes and a couple of short pieces. But the um, the look of like every project has, you know, a different feel. Um, and so every palette has to be a little bit different with Mooncase. I really wanted like a warm autumnal colors. Um, so there's lots of, there's lots of uh, blue, there's lots of um, like tealy type bottom sky blues and um, wa like warm browns and reds and like yellow like the color of leaves um I tried to stay away like I don't want to say I uh, restrict any kind of like any part of the color wheel um but I tried to kind of use you know like bright greens as as kind of an accent color and there's no um like cobalt you know, it's a very rare color in in mooncakes. It's nice um, because I'm just, uh, you know, just like a story of a witch and a werewolf. It get, and the fact that it's coming out in October, you know, having those autumnal colors, it seems to fit very nicely. Thank you. Yeah, that's that was a deliberate color choice. I mean, when Susan and I started this webcomic in 2015, I was not as proficient as co at colors as I am now um learning how to do learning how to do colors has actually been the biggest challenge of of working on mooncakes because I'm I'm very I grew up on manga I gravitate towards black and white and grayscale um I see that in the work I see a couple panels where I see the like, use of like sort of a black and white in addition to some reds in there also Oh, uh, which which panels are you looking at? Where I think the characters finds the werewolf. I think it's the werewolf. No, it's like a four-legged horse looking thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the demon, the demon, demon horse. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, that I try. So it's um, I try to light the panel first. So I'm I try to think about. Um, where the shadows are going to fall and I try to place the shadows before and like the if it's a dark scene if it's like a night scene I'll try to place um, highlights if there's moonlight coming in or if there's like you know magic light um, I'll try to like figure out where that light source is coming from and then it's much easier to color the rest of the scene if I have a light source because if I mean, if you think about, you know, um, being uh, like, if you think about being in a dark room, right, there, everything is so muted. And if there's like a really bright light coming from outside, um, you're going to see that the most. Right. Yeah, I think that's, uh, I mean, it comes through really well. Um, so you you had said that you grew up on manga. I think you're speaking our language a little bit. Ralph and I are big um, uh, 
are big fans. Oh yeah. I, um, so my hometown library is actually amazing. Um, I grew up in Cheshire, Connecticut and, um, we had, so, um, Kelly Jow was our team librarian. Shout out to Kelly for like, and Sarah Morgan who doesn't work there anymore, but they made sure that that, that the teen room was well stocked with comics. Excellent. You know, when I first started as a librarian, I, I mean, I, I, I told, I told the story, like recently, uh, but um, it was, I think, 2002. And I remember I went to one of my first meetings with all of the, the big, you know, librarian people. And they're just like, I don't know how to catalog this Inu Yasha, whatever it's, you know, and I'm like, it's Inu Yasha. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, there was really just like, no, there was no manga in, you know, the libraries. And, and you know, they, they hadn't caught up to that yet. Um, but I mean, and Ralph and I always lament um, how difficult it was to get access to manga and anime when we were younger. Most definitely. I remember going to conventions and getting tapes that were just, they were, they were not even dubbed. They were straight in Japanese. I didn't speak a word of Japanese, but I wanted it because you know what? It was anime and I wanted to get my hands on it. I wanted to watch it and try to figure I, it out. I bet it cost like, you know, $30 for, for tape, right? Like 30 or $50. It was so, yes. it was so expensive. So expensive. <laughs> and yeah, there was none of this, you know, like streaming. It was ridiculous. And sometimes you'd have to go to this, the, the back of, a comic book shop where everything was dusty and you, you know, like you'd be like, all right, I'm going to pick this up. And I really, I really hope that this is what I want to watch because sometimes you just didn't know a lot of times it was reproduced and you know, you're just like, okay, this is, this is, this looks good. I'm hoping that this is what I think it is um, with anime because you never, you, you didn't really know there weren't filters like there are now, which is why I, I love being a librarian and having access to this stuff. So, yeah. yeah. So when I was, when I was a teenager, I remember um, during one of my parents' like trips to China, I really, I begged them to get me these Inuyasha DVDs that were or they were actually they weren't called DVDs. They were called VCDs. I okay. had I had some record of Lotus War VCDs, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, they were dubbed in Chinese, and they were terrible video quality. But I I was like, oh my god, I own like a set of you know Inuyasha <laughs> VCDs. Um, and but yeah, and I was like. I think they were they were definitely uncensored from what they were broadcasting on a uh, tsunami late at night too. I think, yeah. or they were just a bunch of episodes that I had not watched, um, and I was so excited about that. I, yeah, but the the manga in our library, um, there was a lot of like I, th there were several series that I obsessively reread because I hung out in the teen room a lot what were your favorites after school um mars was I one i love mars <laughs> it's so good <laughs> mars was just so good with the dr like the dramatic timing and the romance i just i ate that up yeah um, that one that one i remember when it was coming out and every time an issue would come out i'd have to run to the local i mean this is when i was already a librarian but i ran to uh the bookstore nearby because i needed to know what happened to kira and ray i needed to know like now it, it you know it just it did not come out fast enough for me i i come yes totally and like there was a Taiwanese drama based on the manga that I um, obsessed over. Yeah, I heard about that. It was good. It was, you know, I never actually got around to finishing it. It was a pretty faith, but it was a pretty faithful adaptation of the manga. And also the guy who played Ray, I was like, wow, he's so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> they they were pretty clear about that in um in the comic that Ray was a very. I, I guess um would the term be Bishonen? Would he is he would he would he have fit into that category? Who Ray? Ray. Ray, yeah, I think definitely um definitely Ray was the Bishonen, you know, tall, kind of broad sh shouldered with like the long hair. Beautiful um, boy. <laughs> very angular face. I actually think 
um, the way that Ray is drawn has influenced the way I draw like love interests to this day. <laughs> really? That's a that's an interesting tidbit. Thank you so much yeah, for sharing. Not, I mean, I don't blame you. Not, you know, not in Mooncakes um, because there are no there's no boy love interest. But if I do draw because like I have a I have a short piece coming out um, in April there is a boy love interest and he's very tall, long haired, you know, definitely a tribute. Uh, I definitely attribute his looks to, 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 Ray. to Ray. What, um, what is that one called? Um, it's called synthesis. It's coming out on April 1st. It's part of the, of, of foreshadow, uh, the short story website, um, for YA. Very nice. Excellent. So other than Mars, what are some other favorites? Oh, I'm a big Clamp fan. Um, I loved Cardcaptor Sakura. I love, you know, Magic Knight Ray Earth. Um, every, literally anything they put out, I, I read even, even the weird, creepy ones. They did, <laughs> they did put out a lot of that, but they're, they're, um, so Clamp is not just one person, right? Yeah, they're a four woman collective. Um. And I think I thought that was the coolest thing ever. And I, I, I did, and I still want to be part of a cool comics collective like that. Um, and I remember reading, you know, Wish, which I just, I recently reread and I picked up the, the omnibus. Um, it, it was free at work and I was like so thrilled <laughs> to, to get, to get a copy of that omnibus because um, I feel like Wish was one of the first times I saw like a queer romance in a comic um and the translation in the new com in the new omnibus is so much better than the Tokyo pop one which was extremely gendered and like cis centric did they they so they redid it I, I had the I had the Tokyo pop version myself yeah so you know in the in the Tokyo pop ones they were like all the angels are going to be called female pronouns, even though they're technically not gendered, but also um, some of the angels we will call, we will refer to like by male pronouns. Like they didn't follow their own rule. <laughs> I, I think whatever they wanted to like enforce this kind of heteronormativity, um, they tried really hard to do that. Because but it Clamp was... was not like that at all. I mean, <laughs> like Clamp, no. Clamp was very, was very, I guess, would fluid be a good term for most of what they did? Yes. I mean, especially in Wish, like they, it's stated explicitly, you know, the main character, Kohaku, the angel, she, they, you know, are not um, male or female, but... Um, and I I looked through the translation. I think they really avoided gendering Kohaku at all. In, um, the, in the new one or in the um in, in the the new the omnibus the new one. Yeah, in the new omnibus, they really they avoided gendering uh, <clears throat> the angel because I don't know, but I don't know why the the translator didn't use the third person pronoun i feel like that would have been a little easier than <laughs> speaking around um yeah. the angel's gender but but i appreciate that effort because it's a lot more true to the um to the original intent of the of the artists i um i i did i liked wish very much but now that i know there's a new um a new translation out i'm gonna have to check that out um and i love um i love clamp you were talking about line work before they have some of my favorite line work of all time oh yeah for sure um i think the draftsmanship in their in all of their stories is incredible and i really like how you know they vary their style from project to project um i think that's also uh, a big inspiration for me because it shows that even though you can have a consistent um you can have a kind of a, a very recognizable style um but you can also kind of change it up a little it doesn't have to be the exact same style across all of your projects i'm looking at um i'm looking at ralph ralph do you want to talk about uh, what what were some of your favorites because i know we we go back and forth about this very stuck in the 70s and 80s. I like that old um, 
Going to Guy, uh, Astro Boy, way back, I'm aging myself. Um, <laughs> Star Blazers, anything with a robot in it, I watched. Sorry, typical. With Star Blazers, <laughs> I'm trying to remember, with Star Blazers, the Matsumoto? Leiji Matsumoto. Yes. Yes, yes. He did all those. Um, Orgus, there was a few. That Galaxy came out the Express. Uh, nine, yes, Maytel, all those characters where the, char- the the boys were all sort of that pudgy kind of look to them. The women were all wispy with the hair that went all the way down to their ankles. Which is interesting because I think like I, when I drew, when I drew, I all of my women's hair at first was influenced by Maytel. I was like, that is just that and the, and, uh, the, the, the last unicorn, which I kind of associated because they both had that very long, flowy, wispy hair, and um, I every time I drew like as a teenager, it was just a straight up clamp rip. <laughs> <laughs> did you when you? How did you learn? Is something where you just practicing? You just did on your own, or what did you take? Um, did you like just observe what other people did and sort of try to get your own style? How did you get as good as you are? Um. Uh, so so when I was nine, I took I took private lessons for about like maybe six months to a year. Okay. Um, but he he was the, I I ha, it's not I don't really have a fine arts background per se, but all of the classes I took in high school and as like in school and through this tutor who was kind of weird, like he was like <laughs> my. My mom did not let me go. He wanted to take me to museums, and my mom thought he was creepy. <laughs> he was not going anywhere with him. By um, he was kind of he was kind of weird and creepy, but he was very fine arts focused, yeah. and um, he wanted me to draw from life. And um, all of my all of my art classes in high school were very were very draw from life I ended up mostly teaching myself Mm. photoshop (laughs) um I I taught myself photoshop uh as a teenager um and I also took I found well I I guess I founded a a little computer graphics club in high school for Mm. kids who um so we 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 did that um and I digital art and coloring was something I always loved. So I would look at these these incredible fan artists with their in the you know the mid two thousands. There were all these fan artists with these beautifully designed websites, um, and I would look at how they did things. Sometimes they would post these very helpful tutorials. So I would try to I would look at the tutorials, and I would try to learn from them I would try to emulate them um and I would you know for the line work I looked at I looked at manga um I think in when I was about uh, 17 or 18 um I also looked at uh kind of the golden age of Disney like we had all these we had all the Disney tapes um and my friends and I were big animation nerds so on Fridays we would go to someone's house, uh, usually mine or my friend Sabs. We would pile into the basement and watch Disney movies on a projector. <laughs> um, and I would, I would look at the way the Disney animators drew stuff. Um, I would try to kind of incorporate that. And you know, I love Studio Ghibli um, so much, and uh, Miyazaki's style and work ethic were also a huge influence on me. So I would, I would, I feel like, um, I feel like I just pick things up here and there, like, like a bird or something. Okay. <laughs> um, and I would just, if there's, if there, and I think it's so cool now that we have all these incredible art resources for, for young artists. Um, like there are whole Twitter accounts designed for tutorials that I like the Etherington brothers have a Twitter account. That's all um, very quick one page tutorials, how to draw a fold, how to stage, like how, like how to stage something. I, I even saw uh, how to draw, you know, clavicles, hmm. um, which 
I actually found super helpful because they pointed out that clavicles are curved, not straight. And that kind of changes the way um, you, like in real life, you know, the way we hold our shoulders, it, mm. like our clavicles, it's it's a rounded shape and that kind of affects the way you draw the shape in a 2d rendering okay. so i thought that was super useful i wish someone had um taught me that uh, but like i just picked up just bits and pieces i would look up tutorials um and anytime there, someone posts like you know a coloring tutorial of how to draw like I just want to I, I guess I learned a lot from looking at other people's processes as well excellent we'll see self-taught I like that yeah that's really nice um yeah <clears throat> so um so you live in Brooklyn um is there a very um is there would you say that there's a um a lot of artists uh, a lot of comic bar artists in Brooklyn uh, I know it's it seems like um there's like a lot, I mean, LA is huge now. Uh, but I, I know that there's been, you know, a decent amount of comic artists come from Brooklyn. Yeah. So, um, I love, I love the Brooklyn art crew. <laughs> um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of great comics artists who live in Brooklyn. Um, and, uh, you know, we don't, I, I wouldn't say we hang out all the time, but, we do try to um, support each other and you know, for like for, you know, pers on, on a personal level, everyone is very supportive. Um, I'm actually, I'm actually neighbors with um, another artist, which has been great. Um, Cause we can do work. We can do work sessions. That's nice. Yeah. And I'm, I have, I have um, several really good friends here who are all artists and excuse me and we hang out pretty regularly and they've been amazing and it's so nice to have um it's so nice that like we all have each other so uh just getting back to mooncakes do you um do you have um a favorite character um i actually you know i if I do not have a favorite character. They're all, they're all equally. I love them all equally, except for like the antagonist. Mm. She's not my, you know, she's the antagonist. <laughs> <laughs> you can, I guess you can love her as an antagonist, but <laughs> that's, I, that's tough. Yeah, I guess, I guess I, I appreciate her as an antagonist, but I would not necessarily say I love her. Um, Fair enough. You know, Nova and Tam are both e are both fun to draw in their own ways. Um, mostly, like Nova has a huge amount of hair. Like it's always fun to draw her hair. She has just this like it goes everywhere. <laughs> um, but but Tam makes a lot of like really funny faces. So I like to draw you know their expressions. Awesome. Well, um, if um somebody would like to find out more about your art um where can they um right now where is mooncakes being hosted and um you want to um you have a website yeah so you can find mooncakes on um the mooncakes tumblr page which is mooncakescomic.tumblr.com and you can find me on my website, artofwendyshoe.com. And I'm also on Twitter at Angry Girl Comics. And those are, and on Instagram as Art of Wendy Shoe. And those are the, the main places you will find me. And we're also going to find you at SciCon 2019. On, <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm motioning for Ralph. On, on, uh, when is that going to be? September 19th, 2019. September 14th, 2019. We changed that. <laughs> so we're still getting day. used to that. But that's going to be, it's going to be a really fun event. And we're very, we're very grateful that um, you're going to come out and work with us on that weekend. Yeah, I'm excited. I love working with kids. Um, I'm actually teaching uh, in a, like a comics intensive this spring at a New York high school. And 
and I've taught at this high school for the cup for the last few semesters, just like creative writing classes and every like I just I love working with kids. So it's my pleasure. Awesome. I think um, everybody is going to be thrilled to have you. And we have uh, who else are we are having the voice of Jesse from Pokemon, the current voice of Jesse. Um, Michelle Knotts is going to be there. I don't know if I'm are you at all a um, a Doctor Who person? I am not, but yeah. but Pokemon is so exciting, <laughs> really isn't so it? Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm. We're, we're very excited about that. Pikachu may make an appearance. We don't know. We'll we see. we don't know. We don't know. There is an inflatable Pikachu that hangs out at the library sometimes, so that's always a possibility. Um, right. But yeah, we also so we have uh, Michelle Knotts coming, and then um, Doctor Who. We have um, there's um, this woman Elisa Stern who does the stop motion animation for. Um, so uh, between um, you guys are going to be trifecta as our awesome, uh, our awesome main stage guests. That's so cool. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really, I'm really honored and excited to be there. And we're honored and excited to have you. Most definitely. So we're going to close this chapter of Turn, Turn the Page. It's time to close this chapter of Turn the Page. Join us for the next episode.